Mercer County Sheriff's Office. Uh, yes, um, I may be just totally off my rocker, but I was just out walking my dog, and I came across some bones that look to me to be human. Maybe they're not. But I was wondering if I could send those pictures to you or email them to you. Okay, where, you where did you find this at, ma'am? Um, right on Coldwater Creek. I was over walking my dog, you know, right where they're doing the construction. The bones discovered by the woman walking her dog did indeed belong to a human. However, missing were the arms, feet, and head. Police were unable to identify the deceased. Four years later, DNA analysis led to the discovery that the deceased was Orion Zimmerman, who had disappeared shortly after telling his family that he was moving to Columbus, Ohio. Police found that at the time of Ryan's disappearance, he was living with three roommates. One roommate, Sarah Buzzard, was brought in for questioning. Whatever you might expect to have happened between Sarah and Ryan, you are probably wrong. This is one of the craziest, most senseless murders you'll ever hear about. It's a complex web of unconventional relationships and illogical thought processes. But don't take my word for it. Let Sarah tell her story. Listen, but listen with suspicion. As even today, no one really knows how much of her story is actually true. Coming Thursday, January 6th, about 9.10. Detective Walker and Baker are going to speak with Miss Sarah Buzzard. Good morning. How are you doing, Sarah? Feel free to have a seat. People here. Um, we didn't want to be rude drinking our coffee in front of you, so we've got you on. Oh, Feel free. Thank you so much. To have it if you like. If you don't like coffee, then. Oh, I haven't had coffee for so long. It is a, it's a, it's a specialty. Okay. It's a Cinnabon, so okay. it's on something good. So hopefully. If you don't like it, well, we can get you a water, okay? Mm. So you, okay, so you do like it. I love coffee. No, good deal. <laughs> so you wanted to. Until so she comes back here, she's gonna get your water just in case. Did you get some rest last night? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good job. Yeah. The floor's all shined up mm -hmm. out there. The bottle looks a little funny, but it's sealed. Start making everything so thin and I know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, obviously we we've spoken with uh, Mr. Lamar and Mr. Wilson, your attorneys. Mm -hmm. um, they're fully aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. They've spoken with you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and they've given you the go ahead to speak with us without mm -hmm. them present. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Okay. I I explained to them. I'm still going to read you your Miranda um, rights here, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that's covered. Um, but then we can just chat and clarify uh, some things here. So. That is what we will do here. I can't believe it's January 6th already. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you being willing to come up there. Of course. Speak with us, so. What time did you get up this morning? 8.30ish. Uh, okay. All right. So, read, write, speak English, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. High school of education. Mm -hmm. Bachelor's mm -hmm. degree. Yes. Okay. I think we covered that previously, but mm -hmm. I always like to make sure. Um, and I can read it along here if you want to follow along. If you have any questions, stop me at any time, okay? okay. I am going to initial next to each one as, as we um, go over them, okay? Okay. So before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. Do you understand that? Yes. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions or to have him with you during questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a lawyer, the court can appoint one for you before any questioning, if you wish. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. okay. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. You also have the right to stop answering questions at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that? I'm going to read the waiver portion here. It says, I have read the statement of my rights shown above, and I understand what my rights are. I am willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. The promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure of any kind has been used against me. Does that sound yeah. clear? Okay. 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 
And I'm sorry for being so rude. I've met you before. <laughs> uh, you have not met Detective Carla mm-hmm. Walker. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry, what was your name? Carla Walker. So I apologize for that. Let me know the here. Just seeing your signature acknowledging that we read those and you understand those. Do you have any questions about that at all? Uh, no. Okay. And your date of birth? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2291. Okay. So, um, I guess I don't know what your thoughts are on the easiest way to, to get through this. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's, it's not going to be something easy to yeah. speak about. Um, so we obviously want to make it as simple and comfortable for you as possible. Mm-hmm. But um, also, you know, in your own words, you know, we don't want to, to question after question after question. So we kind of feel like the simplest we may need to be able to ask you to start kind of from the beginning, maybe when um, things started with, uh, when say, Jen moved in, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, and then just kind of tell us how things played out. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I first met Jen around, uh, I think, late June-ish, um, 2014, uh, on a dating site. Mm-hmm. And um, Corey, my husband at the time, wasn't going to be involved. Um, he knew about it, but uh, he said that he wouldn't try to insert himself in the relationship. Um, so she and I would uh, meet up for movies at my apartment until around uh, the third date when uh, we went. We became uh, in a sexual relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, around that time, I learned from her that she was transgender. Um, she had been on hormone therapy for six or seven years, um, but it was before she had her surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when Corey found out, he really tried to insert himself into the relationship because he had this personal philosophy that a perfect relationship involved a man, a woman, and a transgendered individual. Um, I don't know where he came up with this. I never shared it. Mm-hmm. Um, before Jen and I met in person, I had told her that he wouldn't be involved, so the fact that now he was trying to be involved did not help uh, either of us. Um, so we had our relationship and uh Corey was trying to pursue other women without success. Um, I never knew about his conversations because I didn't want to know, and he never sure. volunteered it to me. Um, so then around February 2015, um, Jen went back to her hometown in Massachusetts to um, do some kind of paperwork, um, name change or something like that. She didn't really go into details. Um, and then during her absence, that's when Corey started talking to Ryan online. Um, I didn't know about their conversations until around early April-ish, when he told me that he wanted Ryan to move in with us so that he could act on this philosophy. Uh, And we argued constantly for the entire month because I always felt like he needed this other person to make up for traits that I lacked and that really, really hurt. Um, And he was expecting me to, I don't know, not not fall in love but become infatuated with with Ryan when I first met him and everything would be perfect. Sure. Um, So I, we, we argued because he was adamant about it. I did not want it to happen. He didn't like any of the compromises that I was trying to come up with. Um, So finally, I came up with a compromise that I still didn't like, but it was the best I could do, which was Ryan would be allowed to stay in our spare bedroom on the condition that he pay rent, uh, purchase his own groceries, and at the end of a third, or at the end of a three month period, he would have to have a job and his own apartment Um, because I told Corey that if 
the relationship he was pursuing with him was going well. Um, Ryan could still be around to see him, but I didn't want him staying in the house the whole time. Well, that sounds fair. Yeah. Um, which he, he agreed to. Mm -hmm. um, so I talked to Ryan uh, online once, and I did not like him. Um, he was extremely subservient to the point where I found it extremely annoying. Um, like I was asking him, you know, what are your hobbies? What what do you like to do? And he said, oh, I like to, to draw. And I told him, oh, you know, I have a degree in that. I'd love to help you. He said, oh, no, uh, I'll never be good enough. So I, I understand that the family, his family, um, I, I could see why he had that kind of personality, but I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I let Corey know that I said, uh, I, and I didn't see what he looked like. Um, I don't know if Corey had gotten pictures, but I never got one. And I said, I don't think I'm going to like him when he comes, but I will still give him a chance to at least have somewhere to stay until he gets on his feet. Um, so Jen came back around mid-May 2015, um, and she kind of officially moved into the living room around either the end of June, or early July, something like that, before Ryan came. Um, so she set up her space in the living room. Uh, we fashioned a curtain to block it off from the stairwell in the mm -hmm. kitchen, so there's a little bit of privacy. Um, and then Ryan came. I don't know. Ex I don't remember exactly when, but I think it was either the end of July or early August, 2015, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. Um, and uh, from that point, he moved into the upstairs spare bedroom. Um, Upstairs we also had the bedroom that Corey and I used to stay in um, adjacent. So his spare room would be here, the bedroom was here, there was a long hallway, the bathroom, and then the office. Mm -hmm. um, so while Ryan was there, he did pay rent, he did purchase his groceries, um, but I didn't really interact with him if I didn't have to. Um, Naira did not like him, uh, Jen, sure. uh, yeah. um, she did not like him at all from the beginning. Uh, she would make comments like, he was a disgusting person, the world would be better off without him. She just absolutely loathed him, um, mostly because of uh, his personality, but also because he would eavesdrop at the top of the stairs and she would always catch him and that really bothered her. Mm -hmm. Um, but you just drop on like, your I conversation or just in general in a personal space? Um, if anyone was talking in the kitchen, okay. he would sit at the top of the stairs and try to, to eavesdrop. Mm. Um, so uh, Naira, Jen, kept to herself. You can call her whatever okay. you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. So Naira was, uh, she stayed in the living room primarily. Um, didn't really interact with Corey or Ryan if she could help it, mm -hmm. um, unless we were all in the kitchen uh, during meal times. Um, I bounced back from staying with her, going to work, and then sometimes staying up in the office with Corey uh, because that's where my desk was. Mm -hmm. um, I also tried not to interact with Ryan as much as possible, but I was a little bit more open if he had questions. Um, and then Ryan stayed in his room primarily all the time, um, and then Corey would bounce between hanging out in Ryan's room, staying in the office, uh, or going to school. So we all kind of had a uncomfortable but functioning relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then in September, uh, I. I think it was the 25th, I know it was the, the weekend when everything happened, and I can't exactly remember if it was a Friday or a Saturday, I think it was Friday the 25th, Corey told me that he was meeting um, a woman at the Greyhound bus station, mm -hmm. and that they had reserved a hotel room in downtown Columbus, and they were going to stay there for the whole weekend. Um, and he also told me that uh, he didn't want to have anything to do with Ryan anymore. Uh, he wasn't what Corey expected. Um, and he had not tried to hold up his end of the deal. Um, he had uh, 
scheduled several job interviews and never went to a single one because he was convinced that he was just going to get rejected, so why bother? Mm -hmm. um, so Corey told me that he did not want Ryan there anymore. He had told him that he wanted him to pack up and leave before Corey came back. Mm -hmm. um, and then he left uh, to go to the, the hotel. Um, the next day, uh, I, don't, I don't remember seeing Ryan at all the rest of that day. Um, if I did, it was briefly to go into the kitchen to get something, but he didn't really talk to me. Mm -hmm. Um, on the morning of the 26th, uh, Naira started uh, voicing some plan about killing him, and I did not take her seriously because she would make comments like that sometimes, like if we were in the parking lot and we saw a woman waiting in her car, she would say something like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I just shot her in there, or oh, I wonder what would happen if we drove this cyclist off the road, and things like that. Um, she never acted on them, so I never took her seriously. So when she started mm -hmm. saying things about killing Ryan, I didn't take her seriously. Did she first say something that morning, or had she said something in prior? She may have made passing comments prior, but nothing, nothing major. It was more, it was less about murder, more about just violence. Psychologists have a responsibility to assess potential risks amongst their clients, a fact that has led to a large body of literature on the methods of determining whether an individual is likely to engage in violence. As per this research, we know that many individuals who engage in targeted violence do not direct threats to their targets, but communicate their ideas, plans, or intentions to others. Some also keep journals or diaries recording their thoughts and behaviors. For many of these dangerous individuals, the expression of violent fantasies is often a precursor to actual violence. That's not to say that violent fantasies alone are dangerous, as most people have the occasional violent fantasy. Yet individuals who have frequent violent fantasies are more likely to engage in actual violence. Moreover, individuals high in the personality trait openness, the personality trait related to open-mindedness and novelty seeking, tend to have more frequent violent fantasies. Relevant to this case, openness is also the personality trait you'd expect to be more common in those engaging in polyamorous relationships. As for the possible mechanism, violent fantasies act almost as the opposite to meditative practices, leading to increasingly negative feelings for the person the violent fantasies are aimed at. It's a vicious cycle that leads to more resentment, which in turn fuels more aggressive fantasies toward the person. Naturally, the result is a higher probability of an individual acting on those fantasies. None of this is common knowledge, nor should we have expected Sarah to have known this. However, at some level of human consciousness, we all have a sense for dangerous people. Sarah most likely felt that Jenna was an actual danger, but instead of seeking help, decided to become an accessory to the crime. Um. But she, she, I don't, I can't remember. Okay. Uh, but if she did, they were short and passed, and then that was it. Mm -hmm. um, when I went upstairs at some point during the day to get something out of the office, Ryan had left a note uh, propped up on the staircase banister asking to talk to me, and I really didn't want to talk to him um, because I just wanted him to, to go. Mm -hmm. um, so then I went back downstairs. And then later on, when I went to use the bathroom, as I was exiting, he stuck his head out of his room and said, can I talk to you? So I, I finally did. Um, I sat on the floor and listened as he cried and begged me to give him a second chance. He said that Corey hated him and that uh, he... Well, I, I, I tuned a lot of it out um, because I knew he just he just wanted a second chance. But I told him, "Look, I'm I'm sorry that Corey said that and that he wanted you to leave before your three month period. But if that's what he wants, then I'm going to stand by it. Plus, I pointed out you haven't tried to go to any of your job interviews, and you can't use the excuse that you didn't have a car or you didn't have." Uh, 
if a resume that had interested them enough to schedule it, you just didn't want to go because you chickened out. And I said that I I couldn't I wouldn't do anything. That if that's what Corey wanted, then he would have to leave this sure. weekend. Um, which is not what he wanted to hear, but uh, he he agreed to it. So then I left. I went back downstairs and I filled in Naira on what he had told me. And that's when she went back to fleshing out her plan. I still didn't take her seriously, but I was starting to get worried because of how intricate it was getting. Um, and then when she started gathering tools like uh, trash bags, bleach, um, the handsaw from the shed, uh, I realized she was serious. So I, I tried to talk her out of it. Um, calmly at first and then I started getting a little hysterical um, and she told me that if I didn't help that she was going to do it anyway and that it was going to be a lot messier and a lot harder to get everything done by herself and that Corey would probably come home before she was finished. Um, so she said that she would just give me a small role to play but she would do most of the, the heavy work. Um, and usually at this point, the attorneys ask me, well, why, why did you do it? Why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you kick her out? Um, and it was because I loved her. Um, I knew that she wasn't a good person. I knew that she was kind of borderline sociopathic. She liked to manipulate people, uh, including me early in our relationship. but. She was the only person who had been there for me um, through everything that Corey had put me through. And she was the first person that I actually felt like cared about me. Maybe not so much at this point in our relationship, but later on uh, she was fiercely loyal to me. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to lose her. So I, I agreed that I would help. Um, so in the evening, we waited until Ryan went upstairs to use the bathroom and then we both went into the office. Um, she <clears throat> had a rag uh, that she dipped in bleach mm -hmm. and she had a bottle of vinegar next to her to add to it when the time came because I guess they had some kind of chemical reaction or at least some kind of poisonous gas, I don't really know, but she did the research for it. Um, so when Ryan came out, I was waiting in the doorway of the office, waited until he walked down the hall, and then I jumped on him from behind, uh, put him in a headlock, and pulled him down to the floor with my body weight so um, I could hold him uh, while Naira came in and straddled him and then pressed the rag over his face. Um, when he started making these guttural gasping noises, um, Naira let me get out from under him and I curled up in the office and cried. Um, I didn't want to look at her or him. I, I, uh, I wish that I didn't have to do it, but it was done and I was so scared and horrified, but there wasn't I, I didn't stop. I didn't stop her. I didn't. Well, that was a powerful thing. thing. Yeah. Um, so I stayed in the office. Um, I didn't know that she had put duct tape over his face until uh, the prosecutors or, or you or I can't remember. Somebody told me that when they examined the head that there was duct tape on it. So I didn't see her do that. Um, I'm guessing she did it to make sure that he wouldn't breathe if he wasn't fully dead. Um, and then she asked me to help her move him into the bathtub, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I said I didn't want to see his face. I couldn't bring myself to look at him. Uh, the only thing I could see were his calves sticking out and his skin had turned white so I knew that that he had died um, so I stayed in the office for a while until 
she did get him in the bathtub and she had put a trash bag over his head and severed it and then put that into the freezer so that she could deal with it later. Um, and she started using the handsaw to take off his hands and feet at the, at the joint. Um, and at that time, because I, his face, I didn't have to see his face anymore, I came out to help and she gave me his clothes, uh, instructed me to put it in a trash bag um, while she worked. Um, and after, I'm not sure how much time passed, it felt like maybe an hour, mm -hmm. um, she started to get intestinal cramps, um, so she went to lie down and said I had to take over. Uh, so I put the hands in one bag, or no, um, the hands and the feet she told me to put in a bag and then she also put it in the freezer for later because she said those would be the two big identifying factors and she would have to deal with them separately. Um, so I removed the, the forearms and the calves at the joints um, and it was slow, exhausting work, um, and I did not work fast enough. Um, her original idea was to cut up everything into as small of manageable pieces as possible and then uh, dispose of them that way, but we didn't have enough time to do that, so we just had the head, hand and feet, the forearms went in one bag, the calves went in another bag, and then we just had to deal with the torso. Um, around that time, I'd say maybe four or five in the morning, um, I knew that it was starting to get light out. Um, she came back to help and um, had this black like Tupperware bin that she had kept some of her belongings in, uh, emptied that out and brought it upstairs, and we put uh, the torso in it, all of the pieces, and then bags that had um, the tools, rags, gloves, things like that, mm -hmm. um, and threw those in there too. Um, I waited while she cleaned the bathroom um, quickly. Uh, she said she would do a more thorough job later, um, and then we took the bin and put it in the back of Ryan's car. Um, sometime between, uh, well sometime on the 26th in the afternoon, um, she had apparently talked to a friend online who arranged to purchase Greyhound tickets for us. Um, I never, I didn't know who he was and um, I didn't see her do it because she just wanted to keep it on a need to know basis. Um, so once we got the bin into Ryan's car, that's when she told me uh, our plan was to drive to Illinois, um, leave the car somewhere deserted, and uh, use those tickets to come back to Columbus. Uh, the fastest Greyhound bus route from Illinois to Columbus starts in Champaign and takes 13 and a half hours. The fastest route to Illinois from Columbus is four hours. Add to this the time needed to hide the victim's body parts in various dumpsters around Illinois, and you're looking at over a day's worth of effort for covering up this murder. In fact, Sarah and Jenna would spend over three days in total in this endeavor. Some might be impressed by their effort, but what's perhaps more impressive is the fact that this could have all been avoided by simply allowing Ryan to move out of the house. Let's not forget that the murder took place the day Ryan was to be kicked out of the house. A logical person who wished to remove Ryan from the home would have spent zero effort letting things run their course. Ryan would have moved out and life would have gone on. The fact that this murder happened when it did implies that Jenna most likely did not have the goal of removing Ryan from the house, but instead saw moving day as her last chance to live out her fantasy of murder. Hence the sloppiness and relative lack of a comprehensive plan to conceal the crime. So we started driving and I stopped for gas after maybe half an hour to an hour 
and then that's when the car wouldn't start again. Um, she took my phone and was trying to troubleshoot it while I did everything I could think of, and we couldn't get it to start, so we had to call the tow truck and have it bring it back to the apartment complex. Um, and we asked the driver to leave it on the side of that road mm -hmm. um, that ran past the, the complex that I don't think was actually part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then Naira said that I needed to bring my car around um, because we'd have to use it instead. Um, and when I brought it up alongside, she took some of his belongings out of his trunk, mm -hmm. um, put them in my car, uh, took off the license plates, um, and just rummaged around and tried to find anything that needed to be taken. Mm -hmm. um, and then we moved the bin into the backseat of my car. And we left his car there and started driving again to Illinois. Um, it started getting dark. I don't remember how long we were on the road, but I knew that uh, the day had gone by very quickly. Um, I'm guessing a lot of the time was spent trying to get the car to start, mm -hmm. um, but it did start getting dark when we left in my car. Sure. Um, and I started again driving towards Illinois, and once it got dark, um, Naira would randomly pick exits for me to turn off on and we would drive around trying to find uh, dumpsters that were open mm -hmm. and um, unsupervised and we would throw one of the bags in it and then get back on the highway and keep going. Sure. Um, so we did that until we just had the torso left, um, but at that point we had both been awake for 36 some hours so I kept falling asleep at the wheel and I told her uh, I, I can't keep driving. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when we found the, the wooded area here, um, dumped the torso and turned around and started driving back to Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to stop frequently on country roads to take a quick nap just so I could keep going. Um, and I think it was maybe one, two o'clock in the morning by the time we got back. Um, and Corey was waiting for us in the kitchen. Um, he didn't suspect anything, but he was angry that I had turned off my phone mm -hmm. um, because he had tried to text me to see where I was. Um, so he was furious that he didn't know where we were. Um, I did not want to talk to him. I just wanted to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so we both, uh, Naira and I both went back to the living room and fell asleep. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't remember what she did with the bin. Um, I know that she cleaned it out. I can't remember if she just threw it in the dumpster at the apartment or what she did with it, um, but it, it eventually disappeared somehow. Um, and then she took care of the hands and feet while I was at work and Corey was at school. Um, she did something to make it easy to pick the pieces apart and store that in a bag. And the head, she got um, this uh, soup pot and made some kind of lye mixture and put the head in it, um, partially because it was kind of a trophy for her, but also because she didn't know the best way to dispose of it yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to carry, or so she, she put it in the soup bin, put that in a bag, or several bags, put the pieces of the hands and feet also in the bag, and then kept bagging it up, and we put it in the shed for the time being. And every time we moved, it would have to come with us. So that was a weight that I had to drag with me everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. um, Corey never suspected anything. I told him Ryan packed up and left, and he didn't give him a second thought. Um, he started dating another woman until he moved in with her sometime in November. Um, and Naira and I vacated the apartment um, 
December, January, somewhere. It was slow work mm -hmm. um, and moved everything back to my mom's house. Um, and then early January, uh, Corey and I had an uncontested divorce and then Naira and I married at the end of January. Um, and for a long time we would check the news constantly. Um, that's when we found out that the torso was discovered. Um, but as time went on and we didn't see any new news, um, we started planning for a future instead. Um, and she had, she had, we, we had done a, a, we made a suicide pact that um, should something go wrong or we get discovered that she was going to shoot me first and then kill herself um, because she said she would rather die than spend her life in prison. Um, especially since at the time uh, she was still anatomically male, so she said that she would probably have to go to the male prison, and that was that was a death sentence in itself because she um, she was very very feminine. Mm -hmm. um, I I agreed to the suicide pact, but I was also scared because. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm terrified of death. I did not want to have to have it go that way. Sure. Um, but as things, as, as time passed and nothing new happened, uh, I started to feel better um, mm -hmm. that maybe we'd be able to live a life together. Um, and then the arrest came, and when I said goodbye to her, I could see it in her face that she knew mm -hmm. and um, when I or when uh, the officer that the Marion mm -hmm. Police Department told me what happened um, I wasn't surprised but it still yeah. hurt sure we need tissues that we have okay, okay. <laughs> thank you okay and um that's about it. Okay. So if you don't mind, I, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, kind of going back a little bit uh, to the point where you said she, she would bring it up and talk about it, I guess, and she kind of laid out her plan. What did she explain? Um, she was trying to figure out the best way to, to kill him without alerting anyone. Um, she didn't want to shoot him because that would be loud, that would be messy, and uh, it would draw attention. Um, so the, the only other idea she could come up with that would be quiet would be strangulation. Mm -hmm. um, and she wanted me to hold Ryan down so that he wouldn't or mm -hmm. kick her or anything um, while while she put the, the rag on his face. Um, she didn't share the after part when we needed to dispose of things either because, it, again, she wanted it as a need-to-know basis or she hadn't figured it out just yet. Mm -hmm. um, so she told me that my role was just to pull him down and she would take care of the rest. Do you feel like when you pulled him down, did he pass when you had your arms around him? Do you feel like he was dead and then she told you you could go? I don't know. Okay. Um, I, ha I don't have any experience with what sure. the body or what, what um, a body does as it's fighting. Um, so I I don't know. I know that he was still making noises as I left, mm -hmm. but at that point I didn't know if it was him voluntarily doing it or if it was just a, a reaction. Okay. And um, after I got in the office, I covered my face and sure. I didn't want to look. So anything else was noise right. for me. Assuming we can believe Sarah's story of Jenna being the main actor in this murder, 
You might at this point wonder why we are watching the interrogation of Sarah and not Jenna. The answer is actually quite simple. Jenna is dead. Shortly after the police arrested Sarah, they went to arrest Jenna, who subsequently shot herself in the head upon seeing the police outside. This greatly complicates the case, as now Sarah can essentially pin everything on Jenna. It's possible that Sarah is telling the truth and Jenna was the mastermind of the murder, but it's also possible that Sarah, who had more motive to be permanently rid of her husband's lover, was the engineer of Ryan's death. With the only other two involved parties being dead, we will never know the extent to which Sarah is being truthful. The police can only listen to Sarah's story and compare it to the evidence they do have. And their evidence, primarily a dismembered body and a recovered car that was sold shortly after the murder, tells little about whether Sarah or Jenna was the prime actor. Um, you had mentioned that she went and gathered all these different things. And I guess, what do you mean she went and gathered? Did she go to a store to buy some of this no, stuff? she she everything in the, uh, the apartment. Um, trash bags and bleach and vinegar were in the kitchen um, as cleaning supplies. Um, I don't remember where the handsaw came from. Um, I don't know if if someone left it there, if it was Corey's. Um, it was something that I saw but never really thought about. Um, but she knew that it was in there. In the shed. The shed, okay. Which is the outside little okay, closet type thing. Yeah. Okay. Can you describe this all to me? Um, it was... Or draw it? <coughs> So it was about this big-ish, mm -hmm. or at least the blade was. Um, um, so it kind of looked like this, where this was the frame. Sure. That was the handle, and then the blade was right here. Okay. okay. Um, the pot, you mentioned that she got a pot. Did she go purchase that somewhere? Did you guys use that previously for cooking, or where did that come from? Um, I, th I think she had it with her. Um, I know that it wasn't something that I had ever used. Um, I, I can't remember if she already had it or if she had purchased it before. I just knew that it wasn't something that Corey and I had sure. with us. Okay. Because you had mentioned that she brought this up previously. How far previously did she start making comments about violence towards Ryan or killing Ryan uh, versus when it actually took place that weekend? Um, well, she made, she made uh, maybe not necessarily violent comments, but... Um, disgusting, disgusted comments she would make ever since basically when he arrived. Um, she more commonly said things like, he's a disgusting human being or the world would be better off without him, but she didn't actually say things like, I wonder what would happen if I killed him until that day. The day that happened. You had mentioned the, the bleach and vinegar on the ring. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then mentioned something different was put into the pot. Uh, lye, some kind of lye mixture. Okay. And is that something you would have had on hand or did she go out and purchase? That she did purchase. Um, it, the, uh, the head in the freezer didn't draw any attention because she had packed like, vegetables and stuff in front of it so it didn't mm -hmm. look like it was anything. Um, she asked me to drive her to Lowe's to purchase the lye and then brought it back. Okay. Um, you had also mentioned that she uh, did her research. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, researching the, the chemical reaction. Um, I'm not sure what else. Um, I wasn't either paying attention or actually there when she was doing that research. Does she have her own computer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Own accounts, that sort of thing? Because as we had previously mentioned or spoke, there was different searches and things on your Google. Would that have been you, like searching the jugular 
that sort of thing to know to make sure um, you got it right the first time? I I didn't search for it. Um, it may have been something that she searched for okay. because I wouldn't I would let her borrow my phone if she needed something right mm-hmm. away. Um, so I I don't recall making the search myself. Um, sure. Because I don't I can't think of any information that I would have gotten from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be something that she might have done. Um, <coughs> the car. Uh, the troubleshooting with the car, I knew that, that she did. Um, mm-hmm. She was searching? Yeah, I was searching. Okay. Um, the days leading up to this, you mentioned that Corey indicated that he, you know, wanted Ryan gone, basically. Mm-hmm. Was, was, how do you say, is it Naria? Naira. Naira. I'm sorry. I'm okay. messing up every time. Um, was she a part of those conversations when he would explain that to you? Did she know that you wanted him out of the picture? Typically, he wouldn't say it while she was there, but I would relay the information to her uh, just so everyone was on the same page. Sure. Okay. Um, is what was, did Corey ever tell you what his issues were with Ryan and why it ended so abruptly? Um, <clears throat> part of it was he discovered that Ryan had, I think it was genital herpes. I think, um, It was some kind of of herpes because uh, I don't know exactly what went on Mm -hmm. between the two of them, so I don't know how he found out or if Ryan told him or or something, Mm -hmm. but um, that was kind of the last straw for him because uh, Ryan wasn't what he expected Mm -hmm. or wanted um, because he wasn't able to start any sort of hormone therapy or see a a psychiatrist for it. Mm -hmm. Um, He was physically male, very much so, and I don't think that's what Corey expected. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if he had gotten photos of Ryan um, that made him believe that he looks another way, but uh, it's a combination of Ryan not being what he expected, finding out he had herpes, uh, Ryan never going to um, his interviews and whatever other conversations they had, all of it culminated into uh, him wanting to go back to pursuing women uh, and forgetting that it ever happened. Sure. Did you know that Corey was reaching out to other women back on like dating websites trying to find? Uh, earlier, I didn't. Um, later on, I didn't see him, but I knew that that he was doing that. Um, and uh, he, even before he started trying to act on this three-person philosophy, he was pursuing women to try to have a threesome. Um, and he would contact my friends while I was in college, uh, asking them if they would be interested in pretending like I was also agreeing to the idea, but never knowing about it. So I lost a lot of friends. People stopped hanging out with me. Um, roommates would call me furious, and I'd have to tell them this is the first time I've heard of it. Um, so it was <coughs> something that he always did, uh, it, but after Ryan, it was more uh, open, I guess. I didn't see the messages, he didn't explicitly tell me about them, but I wasn't surprised if he'd say, you know, I'm mm-hmm. meeting this girl somewhere or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to the, the items used in sort you mentioned she got it off in the house, so like the trash bags. Mm-hmm. The um, vacuum seal bag, do you recall that? Um, those, I think we got after we moved um, to our first apartment in Pennsylvania um, because it started to smell a little funny, so mm-hmm. we needed a better seal, um, and her mother had needed uh, vacuum bags anyway, so we bought some took what we needed out of it, and then mailed the, the rest to her mom to okay. use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then the, the duct tape, as you mentioned, you were told by 
your attorneys or what have you. Uh, and I had shown you a picture of the duck that took an aqua blue. Mm -hmm. Do you recall having that on hand? That was mine. That was yours. Uh, she most likely got it out of the office uh, okay. because I used it to um, like decorate notebooks and, mm. and stuff like that. Sure. Okay. Um, so I guess the days leading up, do you recall going uh, with uh, Ryan to, to Kroger or anything like that? Or did you all go to Kroger and um, make multiple different transactions? It, it depended. Um, he did come with us on a few occasions. Um, in my car, uh, and when once we got there, everybody would kind of split up to get their mm -hmm. own things. Um, Corey would go either by himself or with Ryan, and then Ira would come with me. Um, we all did separate transactions. Uh, the reason for this line of questioning stems from Ryan's debit card having large withdrawals and purchases before and after the murder. Sarah's story essentially places all the blame on Jenna. But if the detectives can gain an admission from Sarah regarding the use of Ryan's debit card after the murder, they can charge her with theft in addition to her current charges. Then again, perhaps doing so would be overkill, considering her current charges are two counts of aggravated murder, two counts of murder, three counts of kidnapping, assault, abduction, tampering with evidence, grand theft auto, possessing criminal tools, and two counts of abuse of a corpse. And once we were done, we would load up everything in the car and come back. Um, I think he also went to Kroger or places mm -hmm. like that on his own. Oh, sure. um, but if uh, if everybody needed to go to the grocery anyway, um, then we would just all go. Do you recall any uh, larger purchases? Um, say, multiple. There was multiple transactions like the day before. Um, at Kroger for like around hundred dollars each. That was for the rent. Um, I th I'm trying to remember how much I charged. Um, I I think I th I want to say it was two hundred because I think our rent was six hundred or something like that. So he would pay for a third of it. Um, I would pay for a third. Uh, for Naira and myself because she didn't have a job and then Corey would pay the other third. Um, so those, I do remember asking Ryan to withdraw that money for rent. Um, mm -hmm. And because there's a limit on how much cash back you can get, he'd mm -hmm. have to do it a few times. Okay, okay. that makes more sense, yeah. so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall, I guess, what happened with his like debit card or what have you after he and um, Naira kept them. Okay. Um, I don't know what she did with them. Mm -hmm. um, I think she also got maybe like a flash drive or a hard drive. Um, but she kept all of those to herself. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know exactly what she took. Um, Yeah, I can't. I can't remember what was in the trunk. Um, That's okay. Bags, boxes, and, and she took what she wanted and then stored it mm -hmm. in her area. Okay. Um, so you don't know if the debit card would have been used by mm -hmm. either of you mm -hmm. after he had been deceased right. for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you recall if anything else was in? Um, I guess the torso was in its own bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there anything else of his belongings or clothing-wise that would have been in there that you recall? Not, not in that bag, um, because uh, it took up most of the bag. I think we had to maybe double bag it, but mm -hmm. um, any small belongings, like his clothes, mm -hmm. um, would have been put in its own bag because that was something that we could easily put in one of the dumpsters. Mm -hmm. What about like the, uh, my understanding is he, he traveled with gaming system constantly, mm -hmm. um, or even a, a tablet, anything like that. Do you recall him having those things or um, what happened with those? I think he had a, maybe a Wii U mm -hmm. um, or a 3DS. Um, that was something that Naira kept, uh, and I don't know what she did with it. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if she sold it because she would buy and sell a lot of electronics and uh, fix them up and then resell them. Sure. Um, 
so I, I imagine that she did that at some point, um, but it would have been on her own. Um, the only thing I would have done would be take the box to the post office for her. Um, when she does those transactions. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I remember seeing the Wii U uh, like gamepad screen mm -hmm. um, a couple of times, and then I didn't see it again. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. Um. You doing okay? Yeah. I know we're asking yeah, questions. So I apologize. Just, uh, yeah. It's hard reliving this over and over and over, yeah. and I'm. So after today we can. Uh, forward. I hope so. Yeah. I, I think um, I think I have to do it again at the sentencing. So I'm just very emotionally drained <laughs> having to do this over and over. Well, and unfortunately, in situations like this, sometimes it helps to get it all out. The mm -hmm. more that you speak about it, then that offers closure for you as well. Yeah. So yeah, that has with me in past circumstances. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you'll get that same closure. Yeah. Um. You mentioned that uh, Naira kept the hard drive. Would that have included like a, a tablet or a computer or something, or just specifically I took that? I think it was specifically the the external hard drive. Um, I did let Ryan borrow either a tablet or an old laptop. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which. Um, maybe. So I, I can't remember if I still had my old laptop or if I had given that to someone, but mm -hmm. um, he did borrow something to use to communicate with friends, family, or be online to sure. whatever. Okay. Do you recall um, searching how to to clear or wipe like an Asus tablet? Uh, that that would have been something that Naira would have already known how to do. Okay. Um, okay. Do you recall uh, anything about getting on any of Ryan's accounts, like around that time frame and speaking with one of his friends on, um, I guess it'd be Steam, Steam or uh, the or Google, Google Chat. Google Google Chat. Uh, I didn't. Um, again, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something that Naira could do. Um, she was very, very tech savvy. Okay. Um, so if she did that, uh, I wasn't there to see it, so she may have done it while I was at work or something. Um, but it doesn't surprise me to mm -hmm. hear that something like that might have happened. Um, Do you recall any of Ryan's friends reaching out, asking him about him? Uh, well, I mean, after he was oh, dead. No. Okay. Um, and speaking of work, would you have been at work? Um, this weekend and, and come home early around lunchtime or anything? Or I don't think so. Um, I wouldn't have come home during the break because it was only half an hour and it would it takes uh, I think like 20 minutes to get from mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble to my apartment. Mm -hmm. um, the only day that I think I could have worked might have been on the 25th, um, but. I, I know I definitely didn't on that Saturday and Sunday because I was helping her with everything that mm -hmm. whole time and I did I don't know if I called off work I don't think I did if I did it would have been uh, that Sunday when we came back early in mm -hmm. the morning um, or the day after but um, I can't exactly remember sure um, but I do know that on the at least the 26th and early on the 27th that uh, I wasn't scheduled to, excuse me, to work. Okay. Um, so just so I understand, um, the 25th is when Corey would have went to meet the I woman. I believe so. Okay. Did he drive there himself? Did anybody bring him there? Um, I don't, I don't, I, I can't remember if I had given him a ride there or if he took the bus, um, mm -hmm. because I know on, on, at one instance I gave him a ride and another time he went by himself, Okay. Um, and I, I get that mixed up. Sure, so that's okay. Right. But he, he got there somehow. Okay, so he went on the 25th and then um, Saturday the 26th. When did um, 
I guess the plan start playing out? Uh, when we woke up, maybe it was like 10, 10, 30, 11, somewhere in the late afternoon, early, or um, late morning, early afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were just relaxing in bed and that's when she started thinking out loud about those things and I was kind of half asleep so it was just more of her ramblings to me. Mm -hmm. um, it really wasn't until after I had finished talking to Ryan that uh, her fixation on the plan started to get worrisome because um, before it would have just been like really basic info like oh we kill him and cut him up and throw him somewhere and then that was the end but when she started um, going into the details like you know, we would need to remove this first and that and then we would have to do this that it started becoming less like her other comments and more something new that I didn't, I haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. Despite the warning signs, Sarah does nothing. Or perhaps she was involved in the planning. Ultimately, the death of Jenna means we will never know for certain. What is certain, however, is that this interrogation goes on for another two hours. If you want to hear more of this interrogation, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll move on to other stuff. I got a lot of other stuff. On a final note, true crime content has recently been getting a lot of beat down by way of YouTube. So please show YouTube that this content is welcome on the platform by sharing and liking this video. 